doing this again. <laughs> Show ever. I think people know that you're shorter than me. Like just like generally speaking, I'm okay. even standing all the way up. If I stand, <laughs> Where's that? If I stand straight up, I'm like. Uh, no. So we have a solution <laughs> to our problem. To our problems. <laughs> to all of our problems. I mean, not all of our problems, but some of our some problems. of our problems. Uh. Um, yeah. <laughs> update. So we have signed an annual contract with the marina here, so mm -hmm. we're no longer required to pay like daily rates, which is really good. It means we're sort of paying like winter rates for a whole year, yeah. which is awesome. So we can actually afford to keep Uma in the marina. Not that the project is going to take a year. I mean, it's probably going to take five. <laughs> no. It's supposed um, to take two months. That was uh, three months ago. <laughs> solution number two to our problem is we also got ourselves uh, Italian D visas, which yes. are long term, <laughs> year long visa, which allows us to stay in Italy and in Europe for a year yeah. without needing to leave. So we don't have to like fly in and out every three months, Yeah, which is also good. Solution number three, uh, and the camera is sitting on it right now, is we also have a car. Yeah. This is uh, the car. It's like <laughs> the, same, uh, the same height as Kika. <laughs> so you guys remember our friends Sarah and Kim from Levante Solar. We've been bumping into them every year or so while we've helped develop their folding solar panel project. They are currently sailing through the med, uh, a bit jealous, while we are stuck in marina. So they don't need their RV or their car right now. And so they will need it uh, this fall when they show up in Sardinia. So in the meantime, we brought it down from Milan yeah. to Sardinia so that we can live on it while they're out having fun sailing. Solves our housing solution, at least for the foreseeable future, and our transportation solution. And also, since we're going to be living in the RV for some time, we still need a place to store our stuff. Yes. So we got ourselves a storage unit at the local storage facility. There's and, only like one. And yeah. so we're going to put all of our stuff and all of the boat stuff into that little space. And we're moving all of it in a tiny European car. Even though we don't have much stuff, we're going to have to take multiple trips to the storage unit. Because I think we'd rather do it in this than uh, do it in that. So, yeah. So this is our new home. It's, hey, you know uh, what? We can't we can't live on a sailing yacht. So at least we get to live on a land yacht. But dum. <laughs> we drove it down the coast uh, and put it on a ferry and brought it here to Olbia. Um, I've never driven anything this big before. And, Neither uh, have I. <laughs> loading onto the ferry. Still haven't. I haven't driven this yet. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> loading it on the ferry, they uh, they made us back down a ramp into like the pit of the ferry. Well, they backed us down a ramp and then closed the ramp on top of us. So we're in like a basement filled of RVs now. That was exciting. And uh, yeah, having never backed something up like this before, let's just say I didn't scratch it, but it took a while. But yeah, it's here now. So this is going to be our new home. In the meantime, we have a couple more loads to take to storage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll be back to uh, gutting Boat Uma. Work. Saving Uma. Saving Uma. Instead yeah. of sailing Uma. Just change the... Change the I and L, the I and L to just, V. Just put them together and then separate them again. And then make a V. Yeah, just make a V. Being. We should change our channel name now. <laughs> For like the foreseeable <laughs> future. That'd be funny. All, All right, right. Let's take another load of storage. Yeah. All let's right. go. Unfortunately, our storage unit is on the second floor and there's no elevators, so we have to carry everything. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is only temporarily. Dramatic? Do you know what it feels to be stuffed in a plastic bag and put away with things that you don't even need anymore? No, I can't do this. This has become a toxic relationship and this is exactly what my therapist warned me about. Mm -hmm. Your therapist? <sighs> Kika, do you mm. remember when you were in Norway and you were sitting in a cold, it was dark, it was winter, you were feeling quite sad to be honest and then or or when you felt overwhelmed and you had all these anxiety problems because of your ADHD and you couldn't find a therapist in person because you were moving so much yeah the, hmm where is this going what I'm getting at is that you have your therapist to talk to every single day and today I need mine so here we go this video is now sponsored by BetterHelp wait really now here <clears throat> BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. And you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. Yeah, like being stuck in a closet. Listen, you have your mm -hmm. issues to deal with and I have mine. So, let me finish. You get the same professionalism and quality you would expect from an in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked just for you. So first, you need to answer a few questions about your needs and preference so that BetterHelp can better match you with the right therapist from their network. From there, you can talk to your therapist via text, chat, phone call, or video call, really whatever you are most comfortable with. Anywhere you happen to be, even if it happens to be in a storage unit. Yeah. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can always switch to a new therapist at any time. So if like me, you feel hurt, stressed, trapped in a relationship with someone who doesn't even see your true potential and can't really commit to an in-person therapy session, I definitely recommend checking out BetterHelp. You can also get 10% off your first month if you look at betterhelp.com slash sailinguma. And I will make sure Kika adds the link in the description below. So now, if you excuse me, I have some anger to talk about to my therapist. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're yeah, done. I am done. All right. I guess I'll, I'll see you soon then. Bye. Hey, there better be signal in here. All good? I don't want to talk about it. Just drive. All right. Because we're renovating everything on the inside of the boat doesn't really mean we want to mess up everything on the outside of the boat because the outside of the boat's pretty much good. So uh, I just rinsed all the Sahara dust off of the Dodger and then once it dries we'll put like our covers on so the time we spend in the sun this summer won't count against its longevity. Today we are demoing the head. Uh, we've got plans.
and it involves ripping everything out in the head and uh, maybe moving it to this side of the boat. <laughs> Do you want to explain why we have like a room full of uh, well, cardboard? We've been, we've, been, <laughs> we've been stealing and keeping cardboard from the dumpster so that we have all this like nice strips of cardboard so that once everything's gutted we can like start modeling in real space our plans to see if it's actually going to work because you put it on a computer model and that's fine but then we can prototype it in the boat with cardboard so we've been keeping all this cardboard that we keep finding we have a lot more but eventually we're going to use it man i think i think our out of everything that we've been working on on the boat over the last years, this space is, has probably undergone the most modifications. <laughs> when we started, I remember when we were about to go on our very first shakedown, we delayed our trip by one day because we realized that we had no toilet. And so we went to Home Depot, got a bucket, like, a, like let's do this bucket, and then made a piece of plywood. And we had like the original counter space here with the sink in it and we had like a like a storage space for peat moss or uh, sawdust that we kept grabbing from random places <laughs> but then we upgraded to this toilet which is from Dometic and then we never liked the idea of a toilet facing side to side you're either holding yourself on the toilet or you're holding yourself out of the toilet <laughs> and so we decided to flip it to the other side that was our renovation number two we did this beautiful work and now we are ripping it all apart again and i'm a little bit sad about it but i'm actually very excited to see what we can come up with next we're going to rip out everything the cabinetry the plumbing the electrical that's a mess down there uh the toilet's gonna change and we're going to take out the shower because I remember we built this awesome shower system back in the days and we had this little foot pump so that we can have our hands free. And the problem is our actual shower space broke somewhere inside of the Corian that we glued onto the wall so we don't have access to it unless we take the whole thing out. So we didn't bother fixing it so we just kept using the shower one that we attached with uh, zip ties and that became a shower and that worked for the past couple of years one more thing i forgot to mention for our awesome shower system is so we put the zip ties and then when we put the shower up here it kept sliding back and forth which was very annoying while we were showering and just like kept sliding so what we did to fix it is we added a little rubber band and that keeps it from sliding back and forth because it creates a bit of a friction point with the ceiling so a little tip if your shower is broken and you need to use the wand and zip tie it to the top of your shower space use a just use a rubber band that will fix your problems ah, demo day let's do it demo 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 day I remember specifically buying this tiny little toolkit um, with this little ratchet driver specifically to install this toilet because it's so narrow. It's like the width of one bit. It's the only thing that would fit in beside to take these little mounting screws out. I'm super glad I did because this is like probably become one of my most used little tools. Well then. Oh, it smells bad. Yeah, it smells like rotten seawater, like bilge water. That has been sitting for a long time. One thing the camera can't pick up is the uh, smell of heads. And you mix that with salt water, and it's just one of the most awful smells in the world. Uh, one of the things I love about boats is you can just hose them down. But we are considering doing freshwater flush in our new designs because then it won't smell as bad. And then I have 
no idea how I installed all this stuff. So, taking it apart should be interesting. We installed this in the UK and um, immediately realized that these shower heads had more pressure than we were expecting because they're meant to be body jets. And so they kind of shoot out like, close an eye. They kind of shoot out like perpendicular. They don't like drain down. So when you're standing here, this one's just blasting you in the face and this one's just shooting you in the chest. So we needed to like adapt these like 45 degrees further down. And we have the pieces we need to do that. We just never bothered taking it off because uh, one of these started leaking because we glued this whole thing on. It started leaking in the back and so we couldn't really use it and we just never got around to cutting it out and fixing it. Um, because there's just no good place to install a shower in a place that doesn't have a place to hide the plumbing behind. So this was definitely a temporary solution and it's not the best. And I'm excited to uh, do it better next time. Tell you what though, one thing I totally loved about this was the giant green flushy button. Definitely keeping that. When we do this again, if we do end up gluing a panel in, uh, or if I could have done this again, I would have definitely just copper pipe and soldered all of these connections so that they would have been uh, much more secure. Because I think what happened is one of these little thread connections when it got hot, um, swelled up just a little bit and then started leaking. It wasn't much, but it was enough that it caused the water pump to keep cycling on and off, so we couldn't really use it. Oh, I guess no more lights. No more lights. These tiles have never stuck properly. They're like the peel and stick ones, but like the glue that they use never, and they kept falling off. We've contact cemented a few of them on, but. The one that has contact cements are pretty good though. Yeah, like this one. That one's not, that one's not gonna come off, I'll leave it on. I just need to get to the uh, marble tiles. It's attached to something. Should we go back on the video and see how we put it together? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> look through the historical documents. I don't remember how I put this in, so. Oh, how the f did I put that in there? <laughs> it's like an L bracket holding it on underneath. Uh. Some genius decided to put two screws in it. on the bottom of this thing. Like, they're completely inaccessible. Who built this thing? So, what, another thing I'm pretty excited to rip apart is all this electrical on the back of this cabinet. It started out being original and we sort of just kept piling stuff on top of what was original and keep adding and adding and adding. There's no reason for it to be back here. Uh, it's just one of those things that I'm really excited to do properly. So we're going to be cutting out and removing all these bus bars and all this wiring so that we can redo it better next time. And yes, all the 12 volt breakers are off. Yes, they're all off. This is a run of all original wires that we repurposed. 
when we started working on Uma, but they just like kind of drilled a hole through, shoved all the wires through, and then kind of glassed it over. So these wires are about the worst way you can possibly install wires on a boat. You should run it through conduit. You definitely shouldn't have wires rubbing up against loose hanging and rubbing up against like sharp corners of fiberglass, but that's why we're ripping them out. Hopefully it'll come out. Luckily, this is just an old grounding wire from our rig, uh, but this is a kind of chafe that can happen if you're not careful. If that was a power wire, it could have caused a fire on the boat. So, don't do that. Yeah, I can see your finger. Uh, Hello. Ha <laughs> ha. So, this awesome fold-out sink that we built uh, at this catamaran in Florida. Now it's squeaking for some reason. Uh, totally awesome fold-out sink. And still lines up perfectly four years later. However, we never really found a good way to mount some sort of faucet thing here. We sort of thought about moving one up top and having it come down. But it'd be in the way. If we mounted it here, it would always be exposed. We tried to build something that would fit here, but it's too small to like get your hands underneath. We looked into RV sinks where they have like little pop-out fold-out ones, but then you kind of have to modify the stainless steel bowl of the sink. And so we've used it a couple times like with the shower head to like rinse stuff off, but generally speaking, <laughs> it's a good idea in theory and we never were able to plumb it properly. So we've never actually used it that much. Um, so it's coming out and in head 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, whatever we're on, uh, we'll do something better. Unfortunately, this just never really worked the way we wanted it to. It looked good though. <laughs> Oh, I love the design of it. It works awesome. That part works great. Come on. And like how easily it comes in and out. Works awesome. I think this is what happens when we when somebody gives us unlimited access to a <laughs> to a shop. We just like go crazy. And just be creative. That's probably one of my favorite things that I built on the boat. And unfortunately, we just never really figured out how to make it work properly. I mean, I'm sure there's a way, it just wasn't really worth the effort because we never really used the sink in the head. Uh, we always just used the sink out of the galley. So um, I'm sure if it was the only sink on the boat, we would have figured out a way. Like it's not an impossible solution, but we just never bothered using it. So there wasn't much point putting a bunch of effort into making it work. Pretty much it, right? That's most of it. Yeah, I think that's uh, most of what we need to take out for now. We're gonna probably leave this in. I glassed it in already as just a divider, but I'll probably glass it to the uh, deck. That's gonna be this is gonna be the hallway. So there's all gonna be storage back here. So I'm sure that we can figure out a way to keep that. Now that most of the interior of the head has been gutted. Uh, and we've decided to flip the head to the other side. This right here is gonna become the new corridor through to the beater when we're done. Um, and <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but like there's no bulkhead down here. This is the main bulkhead for our boat and it should be glassed all the way along the hull and all the way down to the bilge and then it should be matched on the other side because that's kind of the main one keeping the boat from getting deformed when you tighten up the rig. Uh, but from here all the way down to here had no glass on it when we bought the boat at all. It was just through voids. Uh, this, this, this piece of fiberglass we added and we matched it on the other side um, but we didn't have access to this area and this is all unglassed still. There's like a little piece, there's like one little tab here but it's coming off the hull. So basically the only part that was actually glassed was up here and in the head there's a little bit more fiberglass coming down and that's just to sort of support the chain plate. But the problem is it's also not glassed at the top. This bulkhead is just, 
the deck is just sitting on the top of the bulkhead. So every time we go sailing, it moves a little bit and it squeaks. And so none of this whole part of the bulkhead is structural at all because it's not sitting on anything at the bottom and it's not glass at the top. So we're gonna cut some of that back now just so we have access to it. And then the idea is gonna be to glass in all of the new bulkheads and structure and floor and cabin sole supports first. And so we'll have a whole bunch of new structure in the hull and actually glass it to the hull properly so that flipping this bulkhead to the other side will be one of the last things that we do. And so it'll already be supported on both sides so that by the time we remove this bulkhead, any of the, any small amount of structure that it's actually providing will already be supported on either side first. So right here is one of the biggest problems with the boat, is that none of these bulkheads are glassed to the cabin top. And on normal production boats, they're not glassed either, but at least they fill this whole channel full of a whole bunch of Cicaflex, so like, it's basically glued together, because all of this is is compression. Like when you walk on the deck and you're stepping down on it, these bulkheads theoretically are supposed to support that weight. But because these aren't glassed and there's no Cicaflex in them, you can hear how bad that squeaking is. And every time it went sailing, they just move just a little bit, and they squeak like crazy. It's gonna be nice to have those out. And everything we put back in, we're gonna glass the cabin top because we're not gonna be taking the cabin top off ever. I don't know why this isn't like standard practice, but it's a production thing, I guess. Time we go sailing. <laughs> These bulkheads just squeak and creak and groan. Obviously, they're not structural. They're not attached to anything. Oh, and here, look, get past the camera. Check this out. See? Not structural. Can't be structural. There's gaps at the top and the bottom. <laughs> I mean, it goes to show, though, now not to top ourselves in the back, but like. It's a lot, it has a lot to do with who sails the boat than the boat itself, because we've yeah. taken this boat in places. It's not the plane, sir. It's the pilot. Exactly. <laughs> Every boat has their limitations, right? We've generally understood what the limitations of this boat have been, and we've never sailed her outside of those limitations. Um, you can cross the ocean in anything that floats, but you just have to be careful and sail within your limitations. So I've never taken this boat out in anything more than like 35, 40 knots of wind. We've purposely avoided situations like that because we've known this boat has had limitations and now we're fixing those limitations. Mm -hmm. Not that we're going to try to go in more than 45 knots of no. wind. That's never no. something that anybody wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not on purpose. But... Uh, but it's also very easy to avoid that with modern satellite weather forecasting. Yeah. You can sail away from 40 knots of wind. Uh, we've been doing it for nine years. <laughs> All right, uh, let's keep cutting buckets. That's heavy plywood. Nice. Nice. Hello. Hello. That's so cool. <laughs> there you have it. It was almost too easy to take it out. Terrifyingly so. Never been able to hug our mask before. We have cardboard so that we can do this. And word. Yeah. So we just have to train our brains to walk this way instead of. I'm gonna like it so much better.
went past for marine grade plywood back in the day. Look at the voids in that. So because we're most likely going to be keeping that bulkhead installed, we're going to cut it back another couple of centimeters once we figure out the exact dimension. But it's solid plywood, so we're probably just going to add more glass to what's already there and just leave it alone. Um, which means that these are going to be the only two pieces that we cut out. And we're keeping one. And I think the other one is going to be up in the build cell this week. Piece of the original Uma chalkboard. And to answer your questions online um, about the offset companion way we were talking about in the last video, uh, a lot of you were thinking that it might have something to do with when you come down the companionway stairs, you don't fall f as far forward. But I don't really think that that makes sense personally because you don't really fall forward and aft on a boat. Like if you do fall down, you fall down on the floor, but you fall side to side, which does make sense. You want stuff to grab and like sort of catch you. You don't want to go all the way across the galley like I did. Um, however, if you do fall forward, personally, I think I'd rather fall down on a nice big flat space on the floor than fall on like the corner of a table or something like that. So having the companionway lined up with the corridor that goes all the way forward, at least to us, makes a lot more sense, which is why we're doing all the work to flip the head to the other side. Um, and it also means we get a U-shaped galley, which is going to be awesome. Um, if you guys want to check out some of the designs that we've been working on or see the layout or renderings and all that stuff, those are all up on Discord, so you guys can check those out if you're in part of the illumination. But um, we're going to clean this mess up, and then uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.